So it sounds like it was really just a, a social thing for you at first, and it morphed into something a lot worse. But what really was your, your rock bottom where you realized that you had to stop and, and make a change? What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today we're coming in with a very, very special podcast. We're coming in with the first official episode of the Gobcast. And listen, that's something I've been waiting to say for a very long time. And this is an episode that I felt I had to do myself. But I'm not alone for this one. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. But before we get to who I have on for this one, who my special guest of the day is, I just want to say that I appreciate all of you for tuning into this and being patient and waiting for this to drop. This is an absolutely exciting moment for everybody here, both myself, Josefo, everybody watching this. I'm beyond hyped to bring this to you guys. This is going to be a banger. We're here today in the Pine Park studio upstairs locked in with the first official view of the Gobcast studio. Look behind me. We have this wall. We have this art happening here. We have Thai tea. We have bongs. We have everything you could ever need. But there's one thing that we haven't talked about yet, and that's our guest. Now, our guest for the day is someone that a lot of you might be familiar with, and I myself am very familiar with him. Now, personally, I don't know how I feel about him. I know he smokes a lot of weed. He's a cool dude. Uh, I know him very well. I kind of don't like him, but I don't know. Maybe you guys will like him. And my guest for the day is Goblin. I'm going to be interviewing myself today. Now, you guys are going to see what that means in just a moment, but I want you guys to get to know me a little better and who's actually behind the Gobcast. I don't think there's any way better to do that than to interview me. So we're going to get to that in just a moment. But before we do, I want to talk a little bit about how we got here. A lot of you guys know that I announced this podcast a very long time ago. And when I announced this, honestly, I think I did it prematurely. I started doing a little bit of research into getting a spot, getting some production, and production was never really the issue, you know, even back in Illinois, before I had moved here to, the, to California, you know, able to go to the Pine Park studio, I had people who were able to help me out. The problem was location. You see, I only wanted to get a one-year lease on a warehouse or studio space. The problem is, most spaces that I toured didn't want to take anything less than two to three years. That wasn't going to work because I wasn't planning to stay for that long. So eventually I found a spot that looked pretty good and I filled out the application. The guy who showed me a tour, he was very kind and he showed me the space and it, it was great. It was well lit. It had a bathroom. What more can a guy ask for to smoke weed in? So I filled out the application. I did my due diligence. And as I was doing that due diligence, I made a discovery I discovered that the next door neighbor was a special education after school care center. And that was something that was omitted from me during the tour. So I wasn't aware of that until I looked into it after. Now, I felt a little bit bad about hotboxing the building right next door. Not even the building, the room right next door to the special education preschool. So I couldn't really go on that one. We made it out to California eventually. And now we're here in the Pine Park studio. So I'd like to introduce my guest for the day, Goblin. Thank you very much for inviting me out, Goblin. I really appreciate it. Now, I'm really excited for this interview. I've got a few questions for you. And the first thing I want to really get into is, I mean, I want to know how you got into YouTube and uh, where, where you got started and what you it's really- good question. What, where your passion came from It's a fucking it. good question, Goblin. I really like that question. You know, what I will say about that, Goblin, is- the way I got into doing YouTube is when I was younger, I watched a bunch of Call of Duty YouTubers and I played Call of Duty all day. In fact, in my seventh grade school picture, if I had the yearbook, I would love to show it, but I don't. So maybe a classmate's watching out there. Tweet this at me, please. God, I was wearing a Modern Warfare 3 t-shirt in my, my seventh grade picture. Uh, and I also had a bowl cut. So my hair, imagine if I just comb my shit straight down in every direction. I looked like a little like Nazi youth. You know, I looked like a little German boy. So it was um, it was an interesting look, an interesting time. But Call of Duty was always something I loved to play. And I watched all these YouTubers play it. And eventually I started making my own videos. But I was super young. I was like 12 years old. And me and my friends in middle school, we had a clan. And it was called DCM. And it stood for Decimate. 
and we'd go and search and destroy lobbies, and we'd talk hella shit to kids, and we'd record it, and we'd upload it. And we got like 200 subscribers. It was the, the greatest news. We couldn't believe it. And I made my own channel after running the clan channel with me and my friends because I was the only one who had a capture card. None of my friends had that shit, but I was the only one who could record the gameplay off the Xbox. So I was the one posting everything off everybody's shit. So I eventually made my own channel. I was making Call of Duty tips and tricks videos. And my, you know, my younger self, I was never like, very well behaved. I didn't like to listen to authority, but at this point I still wasn't really doing what I'm known for, which is a lot of drugs uh, and getting fucked up. So I still wasn't really doing very well in school because I was just playing video games all day. And as I progressed with my YouTube content, I got like 100 subscribers. Couldn't believe it. Got 500 subscribers. Couldn't believe it. By the time I hit 1,000, I was in like my freshman year of high school. And my freshman year of high school, I got drunk for the first time. And I decided I was running out of ideas for Call of Duty videos. I was like, well, what the hell do I talk about on Call of Duty? The game kind of sucks now, you know? Call of Duty Ghost had just came out. We all know how that shit went. Don't pretend it's good. Don't let, I see people on Twitter pretending that shit's good. Don't kid yourself, dude. When that game came out, it was poverty, all right? We could debate that all day in the comments. Either way, so Ghost came out. I was running out of ideas for Call of Duty, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm just going to tell a story. And I decided to tell a few stories, not even about drugs, but about like my childhood. And they did okay. None of them did very well. And then eventually my sophomore year of high school came around and I was totally out of ideas. I was like, man, I don't know what to talk about. And I was scared to talk about the stuff I had been doing in my free time, smoking weed with my friends and, and getting drunk and doing, you know, high school stuff. But I was like, fuck it. I didn't think anyone was going to see it. I didn't really care. I just wanted to, to talk about something that would get more views than usual. I was like, whatever, you know, we'll get 300 views instead of 150. Great news, right? I posted my first time smoking weed video, and that was the first video that I remember, like, really doing well. And after that, I knew I was like, wow, that video had 1,000 views, and I was like, this is it. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to share my experiences. And when I was younger, it was just me being stupid and I was fucked up in my videos and talking about my experiences. And as I got older, it kind of morphed into me reflecting upon my experiences. As more time passed, I was able to tell my stories and look back on them and be like, oh, that was stupid of me. Or, oh, I'd, I'd do that again, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I, I think as I told more stories through my content, people kind of related to that. And it was the first time that I posted something that wasn't just gaming. It was like, oh... This is personable. This is something people could could relate to. And that's when I started to really gain some traction. Uh, and I always, I did this shit for fun. You know, I always made YouTube videos for fun. I always loved doing it for fun. Goblin, as I'm sure you've, you've watched many of my videos, um, I have a lot of fun making it. You know, it's a, it's a blast doing what I do. And I think that's like the only reason that, I did it as long as I did and I continue to do it is because my, my rule of thumb is just have fun. Like I don't, I don't make a video if it's not fun for me to make. I never do that. So that's kind of, kind of why I always did it because I just enjoyed it. I didn't get into it and go like, Oh, I, I'm going to get a million subs and make uh, you know money or whatever. Like I just got into it because making videos was cool. I, I saw all the cool YouTubers doing it. And I wanted to do it too. Great question. Goblin. Why'd you even start doing drugs to begin with? Why did I start doing drugs to begin with? Goblin, you're really on my ass right now. This is question two. You haven't even asked me, like, how, what's your day? You know, how's your day going? Uh, what's the weather like where you live? You know, you, you just come in here and you really get on my dick. All right, listen. I started doing drugs back in high school, honestly, purely out of just fun and the social aspect. When I was younger, I just found being intoxicated the most entertaining thing I could possibly do. And... I don't want to use it as an excuse, but you know, when I was younger, I had ADHD. I got prescribed Adderall when I was pretty young, before I really got into doing any other stuff or getting drunk or anything. And when I got my Adderall script, I started taking that and I was like, I don't really like how this feels, you know, but I, I do like the, the efficiency of it. I, I had kind of learned from that, that getting intoxicated, like, could benefit you, you know, or it, it could change your mind in good ways. Who's texting me? Don't be texting my shit right now. Um, so from my Adderall prescription, before I had ever done anything, 
Um, I had already kind of had a little bit of experience with that. Sometimes I would take a little more than I should have back before I ever started snorting it or any of the crazy shit I did later in my, my younger years. Um, I was still, you know, occasionally taking a little more than I should have selling some to my friends, even back when I was younger. Um, and as I got older, I had just made more friends. I had branched out socially. I, I wanted to, to make as many friends as I could and be accepted by a lot of people. You know, I was, a uh, I, I always, I was a very social guy in high school. My main objective in school was not to go there to learn, not to go there to, to gain any knowledge or get good grades or go to college. My sole reason to go to school was just to have fun with my homies. And the more homies I had, the more fun I had. So whatever my homies were doing, I was down. So very quickly, I started hanging out with people who progressively were doing more and more stuff. At first, it's like we were just smoking blunts in the forest preserve and we were smoking like 0.4 gram blunts, you know, we rolled two of them bitches and we'd have them on six heads. That was a big evening, right? Uh, and we, we'd drink a little bit of liquor, you know, we'd go steal it from the store. We'd have our homie run in and we'd pay him 10 bucks. And then eventually I started doing it myself and that really progressed quickly. And after my, my drinking and smoking, the first thing that I dove into that I would consider like a, a hard drug was probably Xanax. Uh, Xanax or triple C's. I honestly, I don't remember which came first, looking back at it immediately. They were around the same time. It was between my sophomore and junior year of high school. And both of those were something I did, not because the weed wasn't hitting or because like I personally wanted to. It was honestly totally a social thing. You know, it was really like, I want to, I want to do what my homies are doing. You know, my, oh, I see my friends getting fucked up on this. They're having a good time and I wanted to try it out. I was interested in it. So I took Xanax, you know, I started taking DXM, you know, abusing cold meds. We were taking the Delsim, we were drinking NyQuil, which by the way, horrible for you. Like the cold meds are one of the, one of the worst things for your liver. Very bad, very bad. Cold meds are not fun either. I, I like to call them a poverty drug because there's something you do and you have no choice. Like you don't have any other substances to do. You don't have anything else going for you. You're just going to drink some NyQuil and get fucked up, right? So at, that's the point I was at in my younger life. So I, I was popping some Xanax with my friends, taking, taking DXM. And my first time ever robo tripping, which is the term for it, you know, taking cold meds, uh, I took 15 triple C's. Triple C's are a christening cough and cold. They're a they're little red pill. A lot of you guys probably know what these are. But I had a friend who was addicted to these fuckers. And I asked him, I was like, how many should I take my first time? And he goes, oh, 15 of them. To give you an idea of what an actual, like, first time, you know, if you want to get fucked up doses, you take, like, five. You know, five or six. And even then, like, you're going to be, you're going to be chilling. You know, you're going to be big chilling. Taking 15 your first time, I was face down on my friend's lawn. I was vomiting in the grass. It was a summer day, very hot outside. I was all the way face down in the lawn. I probably looked dead to the neighbors, but they didn't really care about me very much, so I don't call the cops. Thankfully, I'm glad they didn't care about me. But after that, you know, it, it kind of progressed more. At, at first, it started as just social use, wanting to do what my friends did. But my grades had gotten so bad from just partying and, and getting fucked up all the time that I got sent to alternative school for my junior year of high school. I got booted out of my main school and sent to a school where everybody did every drug ever. And you could just go to the bathroom and buy anything. We had an overdose on campus pretty much every week, and the school had maybe 90 students total. So that's a very high rate of that. Pretty much everybody at the school, with the exception of maybe five kids, were doing hella drugs. It was an interesting time there, and that's where I met a lot of my other friends, and my drug use really progressed. It moved from a social thing to, like, I was really dependent on being fucked up. I wasn't really having a good time. My relationship with my parents wasn't great because my grades were awful. I was getting kicked out of school. I was skipping school all the time. I was, you know, stealing from stores and shit. I'd steal from my dad, but not my mom. I didn't like my dad, but my mom was always cool. My dad, terrible person. So I'd, I'd stay in his ass, you know, for the drug money. But I, uh, I, I just, it really more from being a social thing into a very degenerate kind of thing. Into a very like, wow, I really kind of am an addict now. You know, this isn't. This isn't fun social use. Now I'm doing drugs at home. Now I'm like, I'm buying bags that are big enough to make sure that I can do them while I'm out and bring them home and do them all night, you know? And as I got older, I eventually dropped out of high school. You know, I went to the alternative school. I got terrible grades even there. The school had no homework and I was still flunking. That's, I mean, that's crazy. So 
my, my use progressed and progressed until I dropped out of high school and I got sent to rehab. And I did, I did seven weeks in a residential rehab center. I believe it was seven weeks off the top. It was around that. It was about two months, give or take. Um, but I was in a residential facility a few states away from home. And I was also on probation. I was on probation because I'd gotten caught stealing. And the only reason I was stealing is because I needed money to get high. So I had caught a felony for retail theft. Got it reduced to a misdemeanor on the condition that I completed my probation. The problem was I couldn't complete my probation because I was still doing hella drugs. Like I could not stop. So my parents threw my ass in rehab after a very bad acid trip. I, I went through residential treatment. I got out and I completed my rehab, but I wasn't really sober. I was still doing stuff here and there on probation. I just wasn't smoking my weed. I got off probation and pretty much got right back to it became a raging cocaine addict, maybe a year and a half off probation. And eventually in late 2021, I, I got California sober. So, you know, smoke a lot of weed, drink liquor here and there, take mushrooms, and you're kind of chilling. That's where I'm at today, you know? And, and the reasons for my drug use stopped being social very quickly and started being a dependency thing. Like, not necessarily a physical dependency where I was twitching and cold sweating if I wasn't fucked up, but a mental dependency where I was just constantly fiending and thinking about getting fucked up. And my mental, you know, my mental state when I was sober was not good because I was just itching. I was itching. So I had to get fucked up. And it took me a long time to kick the cocaine and kick all the other stuff I did. Um, and it, you know, it, it, was a thing where I had to kind of realize, like, it's not fun, you know? It's not something I'm doing to be social, and it hasn't been for a long time. It's something I'm doing at home, alone, every day, and just blowing money on, you know? So it was something that I had to, I had to kind of get a grip on as I became an adult, because if I didn't, I'd probably be fucked, you know? I mean, Goblin, you probably know a lot about that, my dude. You know what I'm saying? So it sounds like it was really just a, a social thing for you at first, and it, it morphed into something a lot worse, but... What really was your, your rock bottom where you realized that you had to stop and, and make a change? Was there a certain point for you where that happened? Listen, there was a lot of points where I was really down bad, but I think a few, th there was not necessarily one specific moment where I was like, this is it, but there was a few. Uh, first off, after I'd gotten my DUI, I got a DUI when I was 20 uh, I got kicked out of my parents' house, but I had no money to move out. So I lived in like a derelict trap house that I was illegally subleasing for my friend's brother. But the power like didn't work in half the outlets. We had no gas. It wasn't possible to hook up the gas. The heat and the cooling were out. So like the, the thermostat in the winter just read low. There was no number on it. It was too cold to read. Uh, I was sleeping on the floor with just a blanket and pillows. And I was just doing cocaine, smoking mid, drinking fake lean just getting fucked up, just doing whatever I could. Um, and in those kind of moments where I was just down bad like that, just spending all my money on getting fucked up, living like shit, sleeping on the floor, I had like nothing for myself, you know, the, the crib's on 32 degrees and I'm lighting candles to try to keep myself warm, you know, it's it's fucked in there. And as I had, I had like gone through living like that, there was one particular instance where I remember I had done a bunch of blow, and my, my plug had gone to jail. The The guy I'd been getting my blow from had gone to jail, so I was getting it off the deep web, and I was getting some sketchy-ass shit. And I remember one day, I was just sitting in the crib of my boxers, and I was just, I was geeking, and my heart was thumping, I was feeling super fucking paranoid, and I was, I was cold sweating, and I was tweaking, I was thinking, like, dude, I think I'm gonna, like, die right now, you know? Like, bro, my heart's thumping, like, I'm, I think this is a heart attack, like, is this what a heart attack feels like? And I literally, I was like, Week and I felt this fucking like tingling going through my body. I was geeking so fucking hard. I, I couldn't feel myself. And that particular day is the day that I remember. I was like, yeah, I can't fucking, I can't live like this anymore, bro. I've been up all day for like, I've been up for days. I would stay up for days and then sleep for like 16 hours and then do it all again. And I remember that day being one of the days, it was like shortly after my first time on the Yola podcast. Um, that day I was like, bro, I can't do this shit anymore. Like this fucking blows. Um, and after that, honestly, like it was really hard for me to quit, but it wasn't at the same time. Like I was really, really determined. I was like, bro, I was honestly terrified that day. 
Like, I remember waking up the next day and I was like, holy shit, like, I didn't die yesterday. Like, that was sick. Like, I'm never doing that shit again. Um, And it took a lot of, like, a lot of marijuana, honestly, to quit cocaine and quit all the other drugs I was doing. Uh, I started smoking way more weed than I ever had before. uh, And it was the only thing that really helped me out of it, you know? If, If I just went cold turkey everything... It wouldn't have worked, but but weed was the one thing that didn't really hurt me. Weed was the one thing where I could still, like, do my thing, you know, be myself, do my job, you know, support myself, fucking be responsible. Um, and I, I couldn't do that with any other drugs, you know? And I, I think that rock bottom moment, moment was definitely that day. I apologize for getting a little negative there pretty early on, Goblin, but I'll, I'll switch it up a little bit. I gotta know, how do you feel about pineapple on pizza? This is a pretty polarizing topic right now. Very nice, Goblin, lightening the tone a little bit. I'll tell you some shit right now. Pineapple is extremely acceptable on pizza. Pineapple and ham on pizza, Hawaiian pizza, fantastic combo, all right? You can put um, pepperoni and uh, and ham on pretty much anything, you know? Honestly, it doesn't even have to be a pizza. You can just throw that shit in a bowl, and I'll fucking eat it. Um, I think pineapple belongs with anything you desire to put it with. Pineapple is is a great flavor it's good dude i i do honestly i do pineapple and pepperoni pizza all the fucking time that shit's bomb it's fantastic i think if you hate on pineapple you're probably a minor you're probably a child you're not old enough to be here to begin with i think real adults they understand pineapple and pizza they have an expanded palate it's like you know talking about sushi a child doesn't like sushi they look at raw fish they're like that's fucking disgusting then you grow up, you become a man, and you realize that sushi's great, right? Raw fish is okay, as long as you don't get a disease and die, you know? So it, it's a risk worth taking, but children are scared of that risk. Same exact thing with pineapple on pizza. If you have an immature mindset, you're scared of taking risks, and that's why you'll never have pineapple on pizza. You just slander it. It's an amazing flavor combo. I don't want to hear any bullshit about pineapple on pizza. I don't want to see a single comment on this podcast talking about pineapple is not good on pizza because it is. And this debate should have been settled years ago. This shouldn't be a question anymore. So honestly, Goblin, you're kind of an asshole for asking that. But thank you, dude. Yeah, you know what? Let's take a bong rip, everybody. You know what? Let's put a timer on these questions. Goblin, honestly, shut the hell up, bro. We're going to take a bong rip right here. Now, all you folks watching, I just want to thank you all for being here. And taking a rip with us. This is a toast to the Gobcast, if you will. This is a a monumental moment. Thank you very much. Now, we have some fantastic weed in the studio today. We have some absolutely amazing pack on the table. And we're going to take our choice. Now, I brought some Percy Stash stuff. This is a really special episode. Now, before the episode, we were smoking some Fire Pine Park. But I don't think I can talk about that flavor yet. So we're not going to talk about that flavor. Instead... Wait, is there more in the grinder? Oh, we're smoking mystery weed. Never mind. I can't tell you guys shit about this, but I'll at least show you what I brought, all right? So the first thing I brought is a little bit of toad venom. This is some great smoke right here. I appreciate this stuff. You know, you guys, I don't know if this is you can see this or not. If not, you're going to wish you could. I mean, this it looks great. It looks great. The nose on this is such a pungent, sweet stink. It almost smells like expired, like bananas and strawberries and like it's just a a very unique nose but also like earthy too it's just i don't know it smells like a garden gone wrong you know in a good way you also brought the banana cannons this has a really crazy nose on it there's a cross of modified bananas and kush mints gotta have it and last but not least i brought some peach o's from the homies at team elite genetics they gave us a, a tour a few weeks ago kind enough to throw us some weed which i really appreciate so I really enjoy this train in particular. So these are the three we're going to smoke today, but we're going to smoke those later because right now we have a secret Pine Park strain in the grinder that honestly I can't, I just can't give you any intel about. Uh, It's marijuana. It's weed. It has THC content. There's terps in it. Um, You know, it was grown and that's all I can really tell you. That's all I can really say. Where'd I put my lighter? Haunted fucker. No, hold on. I got to have it. I got to have it. I do have it. No, I got it. We're good. I do that all the time. That's going to be a common theme. Honestly, I think for future episodes, we're almost going to need like a a lost lighter count. Honest to God, because you guys are going to see if you watch my live streams, you already know this. We lose a lot of fucking lighters around here. Cheers, everybody.
Wow. Goblin, thank you so much for waiting for me to take that rip, bro. I really appreciate it, dude. Uh, so what was your next question for me, Goblin? So you have pretty strong opinions that you're pretty open about with, with the cannabis industry. You tweet a lot about, you know, the, the cannabis industry on Twitter, and you're, you're very open about how you feel. Is there a certain product in, in the weed industry that you don't like that you wouldn't want to see on the market any longer? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so... I think the one the one cannabis product that I would eliminate in the whole industry, the one thing that I don't like, and listen, I try not to be a hater, okay? I, I respect everyone's hustle. Like, there's a product for everybody. Some people love CBD gummies. Some people hate them. Some people love, I don't know, Delta 8. Some people hate it, you know? It is what it is, right? But the one product that I stand against, in my opinion, is snowballs. I think, in general, the snowballs trend, 95% of the time, it is just bad weed covered in THCA. For those of you watching who don't know what a snowball is, let me explain a little bit. These are essentially gentrified moon rocks, okay? If you guys remember the moon rocks from back in the day, they looked like little pieces of dog shit, right? They were covered in the, the brown BHO goop, and then they it was just mid on the inside. Now they're taking the mid and they're coating it in THCA powder. So it's white. They look like little rocks of, I don't know, little chunks of cocaine or crack or something. But they don't look quite right. And I don't really like the trend. A lot of people buy into it. They're like, dude, this shit, I mean, there's extra THC, dude, it's fire. But the thing is, the terps are really what gets you high when it comes to weed. Yeah, THC is a big part of it. But the entourage effect is a very real thing that I believe in. And I think that that doesn't add anything to the experience. I don't like the snowballs. So that's the thing that I would take off the shelf, Goblin. That's a great question, dude. So, Goblin, dude. I got to ask. If, hypothetically, we were in an alternate universe and you had never done YouTube, this had never been your thing, we weren't sitting here now, what else would you have been doing with your life? Is there something particular that you wanted to get into? So if I weren't a YouTuber, Goblin, that's an interesting question. I remember, I mean, honestly, like, I there was never really a point in my life up until I was already doing it where I was like, oh, I really want to be a YouTuber for a living. And it was like my primary prerogative. I mean, I always thought to myself as I was making videos, like, oh, it would be cool to be like those guys who have a bunch of subs and do it for a living. But I, I really did it because I thought it was fun and I wanted to get views. I never thought about the amount of money that, you know, someone could make being enough to to make a living. I, I always just thought like, oh, you could get a lot of views and people would, you know, follow you. And that's fucking cool. Um, when I was younger, I remember I always, always, always wanted to be a lawyer because I like to argue. I was like, bro, I would be a decent ass lawyer. I'd read the book. I'd come to court. I'd be like, yo, you guys fucked up. My client is innocent. I would have gotten hella people freed. I would have gotten some slimy ass people freed. Uh, but luckily, I never chose that route. So there's probably some people in prison right now that like had that alternate universe happened. I would have gotten out. I don't know. Could have been crazy. It would have been like Gotham City out here. I don't know. Would have been getting all the ops out. But Thankfully, I'm not that. And as I got older, I realized I was like, damn, there's no way in hell I'm ever doing law school. That's crazy. Like, I don't I can't even do high school that we're not doing law school. So I started thinking, I was like, what's a job I could do with no college degree? And I settled on garbage man. I remember me and my friends when we were in high school, we were looking into it and we were like, bro, garbage men make hella money. I don't know if you guys have ever researched this, but I'm not kidding. Your local garbage man could probably beat you in band for band. I'm not kidding. Like that motherfucker makes paper. Okay. In big cities, the garbage men make damn near $200,000 at like the peak of their positions. They make good money. So I was looking at that and I was like, boys, the day we turn 18, we are applying at waste management. Like, we're getting into it, dude. Maybe the mafia will control us. Who cares? I'm down for that. Whatever it takes, right? So that was the plan. And I kept making videos, and I worked at a car dealership for a bit. And that was the first job I, I actually had where I was like, oh, okay, I could see myself really doing this for a living. I, uh, I worked at a Lexus dealership. And honestly... I couldn't tell you how the fuck I got hired. You know, I mean, Goblin, I really couldn't tell you how the fuck I got hired. I um, I, I didn't really have any valid experience to, to work at any position at a Lexus dealership. 
They had me first as a cashier and a receptionist. Receptionist was crazy because I was high as fuck every day. Um, well, not every day. No, towards the end of the job, yeah. Towards the end of the job, yeah. That's why I quit. But um, I uh, they, they had me as a receptionist and a cashier, and eventually they moved me up to a, a like a phone service advisor. So people would call the dealership, and when they had a service issue with their Lexus, my ass would answer and have to like go through my handbook and be like, oh, I think it's this. Bro, I probably gave people some horrible information because I'll tell you right now, I never did what I was supposed to. I was just like, could be like, if anyone's car was not starting, battery every time. I'd just be like, yeah, I think it's your battery, man. Like, it's probably your battery. You got to you gotta check your, you know, jump start it, then call back in an hour. And then I just let like the other chick in the room answer that call and deal with that one, you know? Um, and eventually I was, I was like about to get into internet sales and then like transition to a salesman longer term. And then I quit. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And mind you working this dealership, I was getting paid $10 and like 50 cents an hour. So I was doing all this work. I was a cashier. Like I would go in my first three to four hours of my day would be in the service room, taking phone calls. Then my next like three to four hours would be cashier or receptionist. And then the last hour, I would do all the like accounting shit for the balance sheet for the day for the uh, the cash register, and then I'd fucking go home. And they paid me ten dollars and fifty cents an hour for all that work. So I was like, I'm not doing this. Um, I remember the month I quit, I got like a like a five hundred dollar check off YouTube, and I was like, this is it. I'm rich now. Like this is I'm I'm balling five hundred dollars. You know, and mind you, I lived with my parents, had no bills, so I was like, fuck it. Um, but had it had that not happened. Had YouTube never never happened, if I just got banned one day or deleted my channel, I think I still would have been at that dealership. Honestly, I think I think I still would have been there to this day, because it was. It, I mean, it was only like seven years ago that I worked there, so I probably still would be there right now, maybe selling Lexuses. Damn, that'd be crazy. That's somebody that you're. Oh nah, dude! All the managers were old as fuck. One of them did hella cocaine though, so maybe that could have been me. He would always make jokes about it. One of my managers, he'd always oh. He'd always be like, oh, you watching the big game this Sunday? Like, I'm going to be ready to go. And he'd always, like, do, like, the little, like, you know? He he would joke around with everybody, and he'd flirt with all the bitches. I think he got fired eventually. He probably had some allegations against him, knowing that guy. Um, but, it, I mean, that's a car dealership for you. That's, that's like, every sales manager at a car dealership. So it seems like you have some pretty interesting experiences that involve a lot of substances that you've done. There's no doubt about that. But do you have any scenario that you think people would say, wow, that's that's only something that you could get into? I'd say for me, there's a lot of psychedelic ones I could talk about, but also I feel like everybody has some really crazy psychedelic stories. For me, I think the time that I cooked crack with a couple of my friends was probably the incident where it was like, wow, I don't know anyone else who I could do this with. And that also goes to my friends I did that with. I mean, truly, I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's people that smoke crack out there, but, like, I didn't know any other people who had never done that before who'd be down to Google how to cook crack with me and actually do it and smoke it out of tinfoil. Like, that was a revolutionary day in my life. And honestly, it's, I don't know if it's something I would do again, but it's something that I definitely don't regret. Like, that is a story, if I have, like, grandchildren one day... I'm going to gather them around and I'm going to tell them the story of the time that grandpappy smoked rock and that's going to be fire. I think they're going to really appreciate that. Um, and it was really just an impulse thing. You know, it was after school. Uh, I had some buddies over at my house. We had some cocaine. Uh, I had a buddy who was selling it. I wasn't personally, but he, he sold a lot of different shit and he was kind of bored of it. He was like, I don't know, like been doing a lot of coke. Like it's just kind of boring. And, Back then, we wanted drugs that really fucked us up. We wanted drugs that made us stupid as hell, and cocaine didn't really do that. So we decided that we should try cooking crack. And at first, it was a joke, you know, ha, ha, ha. And then it got very serious. We were like, wait, Google it real quick. And we Googled it, and there was actually a little tutorial, and there was a little video. We were reading articles, and there was a video that came up. And you, listen... I'm not going to give you the recipe in this video because we'll probably get terminated. But did you know that you could cook crack in a spoon? Just a spoon. You don't even need a pot. They make it look so complicated. If you want a little personal uh, serving, all you need is a spoon and a lighter. 
and some other stuff, but uh, we're not going to, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I recently, you know, honestly, I, I kind of try to, I don't want to say tread lightly on the topics I discuss, but I think people kind of know what they expect when they follow me. I think people kind of know what my opinion is going to be on certain things. And I make that very clear through my content, you know, and, and just like the way I act on social media. But back in the day, I remember when the first Overwatch game came out, I made a video about it and I fucking hated it. I, I played it. I sucked at it. I was getting clapped and I made a video about it. And it was like Overwatch like sucks. The title of it was literally like why you shouldn't buy Overwatch. And uh, I posted this shit, and this is back when I was getting maybe 500 views a video, and this shit got like four or 5,000 views in a, like a day or two, and all the comments were haters, dude, and all, the like to dislike ratio was so bad, I had like 85% dislikes, it was brutal, I had like maybe one in 10 comments supporting me in any way, shape, or form. And every other one was like, this guy's a moron. I hope to never see your content again. Like, fuck you. And that was the the one that I deleted that video fast as hell. I was like, holy shit. Like, I can't leave this up, dude. It's it's going to be over. I'm always going to be known as the Overwatch hater, dude. You know? like, I, <laughs> So I deleted that shit. And that was way, way long ago. I'm talking like, what, probably 2014. And since then, I don't know. Honestly, I just don't really pay attention to, like, hate. I just kind of say what I want. You know, I don't know. It is what it is. People, like I said, people people know to expect when they follow me. So I think that's the, that's the instance where I would say I got the most, like, noticeable backlash. Every public figure has had some pretty interesting encounters with viewers or fans or however you want to put it. Do you have a certain instance that really sticks out to you as negative or positive or just interesting? So the most awkward encounter I've had with a fan. You know, I've had some interesting ones for sure. I mean, I've encountered, I've bumped into a few people, which I find this kind of weird. I don't think, I mean, not weird necessarily. It's just kind of crazy to me. Like, I'm a cool guy. You can just come say hello to me. You don't got to be nervous. But I, I've definitely dapped up a couple people who were like shaking. I don't know if they were just like anxious or what it was. Um, that was one that like, I remember I was just like, oh, like, damn, chill, you know, like, um, but there was one really weird one and I was at a gas station one time. I was at an ATM. I ran into a gas station really fast. I was pulling out a little bit of cash. And as I walked in, I was walking to the ATM and there was this guy in there who was just staring at me. And as soon as I walked in, he locked eyes with me. It was just like almost from the entire other end of the gas station, just fucking glaring at me and I, I looked over and i was like yo i'm gonna have to like like i don't know what's gonna happen here like this guy's ch like i think he's like about to scrap me or something like i don't know what's gonna happen so i go to the atm and as i'm at the atm he starts walking up behind me and i'm like dude like I i'm gonna have to fight this guy like i thought he had a problem or something i didn't know what was going on so and he was still like staring at me i looked over he hadn't said a word yet he didn't say like like goblin or anything like as he was approaching he just walked right up behind me and then waited until i was done at the atm and as i was like pulling out my cash i was like all right he wants the money like this is what he's gonna do he's gonna like try to grab the money so i was like try to real side like grab my money put it in the pocket and i grab my money i put it away and he's like i turn around he's like are you goblin and I was like, oh my fucking God, I actually thought this guy was about to rob me. Like, I thought I was about to have to defend myself. I was like, dude, I don't know if I've ever really been put in a situation where I had to defend myself at the ATM. I was like, this is it. I've seen this in the videos. I've watched this online all the time. I I have to apply my knowledge here. And he was like, are you, are you Goblin? And I was like, yeah, man. And he was like, he was like, oh, good to meet you. You know, he didn't like, he didn't really say much at all. He didn't like take a picture or anything. I mean, a lot of times... When I bump into people, they want a picture, but he just, he just wanted confirmation. He was like, are you Goblin? I was like, yeah. He's like, I thought so. <laughs> that just, just went about his day. It was a, that was like probably the weirdest one that stands out to me just because I was so terrified. I was like, dude, I didn't realize it was a viewer. I thought it was just like some dude checking out how much money I was pulling out of the ATM. It was just like a couple hundred bucks, you know? Um, that, that was the weirdest one. I've had a lot of fun ones, though. My favorite fan encounter I've had, to to do, like, the opposite of that, uh, probably there was a Jimmy John's by my old house I used to go to. And I remember I would go into this Jimmy John's all the time, and there was these two dudes that were cousins, but they looked, well, like, a lot like each other. Like, 
they might have been brothers. They claim to be cousins though. But I would go in there and they were cool as hell and they'd always make my sandwich like the best way, bro. I have a very specific Jimmy John's order and they they just fucking do it right. You know, like they put the right amount of sauce. They put like, I get the number five. This is going to sound crazy. Add mayo on that bitch. Okay. All right. A viewer told me about that and it's good. And they also said that they like that as well. So it's validated by employees. It's, it's the Italian with mayo though. So it sounds weird, but it's good. I swear to God. Uh, either way, they just made it right every time and they throw in like a free cookie and the chips and shit, all of it, like, oh, I had only pay for the sandwich. They were just amazing. Uh, I hope they're doing great. If you're out there watching this, Jimmy John's dudes, uh, I hope you're doing great. But that was probably my favorite fan encounter just because every time I go in there and be like, fuck yeah, you know, like Jimmy John's time, you know, I love Jimmy John's. Uh, thank you very much, Goblin. Thank you for the questions. Well, Goblin, I want to thank you very much for coming out today, man, asking me those questions. I'm going to take it from here, but... Thank you very much for interviewing me, man. I really appreciate you. Uh, you know, thank you very much. Peace out, bro. I'll see you soon, man. Hey, it's time to get high, ladies and gents. I think you know the drill. We're smoking uh, We're smoking some fun stuff, you know. I, I think I'm going to pack... Uh, we're going to do Toad Venom for today. Shout out Kush Clinic. You know the homies. Uh, we're getting high today. We're getting very, very high. I brought some good weed. Well, we find that shit. I have a couple of watches with it. Okay, all right. What's uh shoot him at me? What you got? What about who would win? A lion versus a bear on coke. Wait, so are they both on coke or just the bear? Just the bear. the bear. Oh. The bear would fucking maul that lion, dude. Nah, the bear, think about it, dude. So the lion, he's a tiny little fuck compared to the bear, right? Like he's kind of a loser. Like, yeah, he's fast and shit. But, like, bear? Wait. What type? Any type of bear? Can I pick the type of bear? Okay. But disclose what type of bear. Black bear. That's like a swole-ass bear, right? That's a fucking... That's a jacked-ass bear. Uh, but they are scared of people. Do you think that they will be scared about lions? Well, a lion's not people. He's, he'd beat his fucking... I mean, if the lion's coming at him, he's got to defend himself. So, I think... I think the bear, and, and he's on cocaine, so he's probably got a good five minutes where he's torqued the fuck up. He could easily, you know, he pounces on top of the lion, fucking rip him, you know, just, just like, just shit on him. I think the bear on coke is taking that one. All right, next question. Seven molly, seven molly penguins versus one coke bear. Can you define the dose of molly? How much molly did they take? Enough for a small penguin. Damn. Okay. All right. So that's up for debate. All right. So let's say they took a pointer. Eat. All right. So seven penguins that took a point one of Molly. All right. So they're rolling pretty fucking hard because they're little penguins versus the Coke. I mean, how does it like, does Molly even help? A, does that benefit a penguin in combat? I don't think it does, ladies and gents. I think if a, if a penguin's bussing, He's just going to be vibing. Like, they already huddle up. They stay close together. But when you're rolling, you know, they're going to want to be closer together. So, they're going to be, like, hugging and shit. The bear's going to come in and just swipe them. Like, I think two swipes. Like, he hits a right, left hook. And they're just ripped in half. They're shredded like fucking roast beef, dude. I think they're donezo. I think Molly Penguins, like, if, if they were standing against some fish... You know, if the question was, like, seven Molly penguins on one Coke fish, like, yeah, dude, the penguins got it. But, like, Coke bear? I mean, listen, if if the Coke bear can kill the lion, the Coke bears can absolutely maul seven penguins. I think seven penguins on Molly are far stronger than a sober lion. Now, if the lion was on Coke, that'd be a different ball game. But either way, either way, I, I think the I think the bear. But what about if the seven molly penguins kill the bear with love? Do bears feel love? But they are gonna fucking hug him, and they and it's gonna get warm, warm, warm. And uh... how true? So seven. All right. How wide is the wingspan of a penguin? Do you think? Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> But there's seven. Okay, there's seven, though. So they could probably fully wrap around the bear and hug him. But if he even gets, like, one or two of them, 
dead, they don't have enough like wingspan to even <laughs> love him enough to to fucking kill him or anything. So I think, I think the bear still takes it, bro. Because like the penguins would have to operate absolutely perfectly, and these aren't like the like the Madagascar movie penguins. These are like fucking I don't know Detroit Zoo penguins. Like they're not the most alert penguins on the market, you know. So I think I think the Coke Bear's taking it. All right, next mm-hmm. question: An ostrich on PCP versus the Coke Bear. Oh. You know how fucking fast a PCP ostrich would be pecking. Dude, his beak? Nah, all right, I was about to take a bone rip, but nah, because imagine it. All right, so this is fucking beak, right? And there's a there's a, there's a a bear, right? And he's like, let's say he's like chilling, you know, he's running at him. Ostrich is agile, jukes him. Just fucking pecks the shit out of him. And this is sharp, right? This is sharp. So he's just, just pecking the shit out of him, dude. I think, and like the PCP, he's not going to feel any strain on his neck. He's not going to feel slow. Like he's going to be faster than the bear. He's going to have more reach than the bear. He's going to be high as shit on P. I mean, people on PCP take all their clothes off and run in traffic. They like, they, they stand through tasers and shit. An ostrich on that shit is going to be unstoppable. Like you're going to need a, a fucking... I don't know, an elephant gun to take that thing down. Like, like multiple of them, probably. I think the ostrich is is running. All right, and last one. Um, Leopard on meth versus a Coke bear. Who? Leopard on meth versus a Coke. A meth leopard. So that's kind of like, it's like Trevor from GTA, pretty much. That guy's a meth leopard, essentially. Where's the Coke bear? I think, I mean, all right, objectively though, <clears throat> is a lion or a leopard stronger? What do you think? Lion is stronger, stronger, the leopard leopard should be faster. But does the meth, mm, you're right. But they're not running away. They're going to fight to the death, you know? So, like, in that context, I think it's still the Coke Bear. I think it's still the Coke Bear because the, the leopard, like, that dude's a little pussy, dude. Like, he's just a lighter lion. Like, he's a little more agile. It's like a cat, bro. Like, leopards, like, they'll maul us. But, like, a bear, bro, they, they, both, they both attack with their claws and their mouths. It's, like, the same way. So the leopard would have to, like, jump on his back and, like, eat him and shit, but the bear, like, he could just roll over, grab him, you know, fucking beat his ass, you know, I don't know, and he weighed, the bear weighs like a million pounds, you know, the leopard's probably light as hell, I don't know, dude, I think the bear, I think the bear, 100%, oh, but I think the ostrich would kill probably everything on this list, but on the correct concoction of drugs. That's That's the question. Question for the day. Thank you very much, thank you very much, Josefo. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Do you agree or not? I mean, what is the strongest drugged up animal that we that we've put on the list today? I don't know. Personally, yeah, I think I think PCP ostrich is taking this shit home, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I really do. I really do. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Now listen, we have some fun segments coming up, but before we get into those segments, I have a very special one that I actually came up with myself today. Now we're going to talk about some of the games that I've been playing lately. As you guys know, listen, in my free time, I get high as shit and I play a lot of games. It's always been a theme. If you listen to enough of my videos, you know that when I get zooted, when I get fucked up, I play a lot of games. You know, it's it's a core part of, of what I do, of, of who I am. I put gameplay in my videos because that's, that's what I'm playing. Um, and I like to talk about the stuff I've been playing lately because, listen, let me tell you right now. The gaming industry lately has sucked. There's not very good games out. And I'm also a big physical media guy. And nowadays when you buy a disc, the disc doesn't have the game on it. It just tells your PlayStation or your Xbox to download the game. So you got to collect as much like real games with shit on the disc as you possibly can. So I brought my physical copies of some of the games I've been playing lately. And we're just going to talk about three of them. We're we're just going to run through three of them. So the first one that I brought is Fable 2, ladies and gentlemen, for the Xbox 360. Now listen, 
the reason I like this game is, is straightforward and to the point. When I was a kid, I really loved the fact that you could just like get a job and buy a crib and start a family on this game. You don't even have to like play the story, bro. You can play this shit like The Sims, dog. You can just get in there, fucking work at the blacksmith, buy a crib, you know, get a wife, have a child, right? But if Shorty starts acting up, you and if your child, if your children start acting up, you can literally throw them out the window. Like, you can beat their ass, right? Like, you can be an authoritarian in that bitch. So I would buy hella houses on one block. I get, like, ten wives, put them in all the cribs. And that's what I do on this playthrough, too. You know, you put them in all the cribs. Like, you, you get them in the town, put them in all the, you know, town. They find out you're cheating. They get all pissed off. You can fight them, bro. You can, you can, the guards come in, bro. You send everyone flying through the fucking window. Everyone's pissed. Domestic violence. Now you're divorced. You have ten estranged children. You own a bunch of derelict property. It's honestly... It's more of a life simulator than, like, a real story video game. Like, fuck the story. You can do evil-ass things in this game. So I, I highly recommend Fable 2. You know, I really like this game a lot. This is, uh, unfortunately, the last really good Fable. We don't talk about the third one. Um, and we don't talk about any other games that uh, Peter Molinix has ever made. So, uh, what, what a banger game, though. What a banger game, though. Now, next up, we got a game that, listen, I bought this shit a long time ago. I've been waiting to play this one, all right? We're talking about Armored Core, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in this game, honestly, I have no idea what the story's about. I mean, they they basically, they're just like, yo, 61, get in there and blow shit up. Like, you, I have no idea what the objective is. I don't know why I'm doing the things I'm doing in this game. All I know is making a mech, like, you basically make a robot dude, you can customize everything. All the guns, you can customize his fucking legs, you can customize, you know, the way he moves around, everything. And you go in, and, and the boss battles are hard. It's like robot Dark Souls, pretty much. This game is pretty fire, though. Uh, I only like playing it when I'm really, really fried, though. For some reason, like, when I'm sober, I get mad at this game. But when I'm cooked, I think my ideas are stupid enough to beat the game. Like, I make a dumb enough robot to, like, beat the level. So, I, I really, I think if you're fried, if you smoke a lot of weed... If you like coming up with, like, stupid-looking robots, honestly, I think the dumber-looking your robot is, the, like, better it is, usually, in this game. So, I, I can't recommend this one enough. It's a banger, ladies and gentlemen. And last but not least is one that I started playing again. This is the third time I've played through this game. Fucking Assassin's Creed Origins. I started playing it again. Listen, this is the only good Assassin's Creed that they've made in a long time. Odyssey's okay, too. But this one's fire, in particular, because Egypt is cool. Uh, and I just, I, I like the combat in this one. You know, it has less microtransactions than the newer ones, you know? It's a, a little better, but <laughs> there's still microtransactions in it. Uh, but I just like this one. I think this is the last good one they made in a long time. Uh, this is another kind of game where, like, I only play it when I'm fucked up. Like, when I'm sober, I, I don't play this game. When I'm fucked up and I'm like, damn, I want to explore a big world and just go, like, stab innocent people... You know, this is a game. You can commit a lot of crimes in this. Uh, the story is essentially about a bald man whose child gets stabbed and then you go around screaming about it for like fucking 60 hours. Uh, you, you just go city to city and, and stab people and you go, where is my son? And like, he, he, fucking no one knows, dude. No one knows. Like, they're like, what are you talking about? You're fucking insane. And you kill like a whole group of people. And like, you, I mean, uh, it's just... It's a crazy game. It's a crazy game. But the storyline is good. I, I won't spoil too much. Um, the The map is fun. It's it's cool. I like this one a lot. Those are the three games I've been playing lately that I brought for today. Now, we're past that part, ladies and gentlemen. Goblin is uh, he's walking out, out of the studio, you know, just now. He's, uh, you know, bye, Goblin. He's out of there, you know. He fucking dip. Uh, big ups to him for interviewing me, though, today. I appreciate it. Now... Some of you guys might be curious on who my future guests might be. I'm interviewing myself. You might be wondering, Goblin, well, you know, who else are you having on the podcast? I'm not going to necessarily name any names yet, but what I will say is I'm not only going to have people that you guys are really familiar with uh, just in general from other internet content, but I'm also going to have some personal friends of mine that you guys might know from my other stories, from my videos on this podcast, similar to the episode I did with Kyle, episode zero. So uh, I, I think I'm going to be doing it different. You know, we're not just going to be having guests on typical to your, your standard podcast. We're going to have people that really impact the, the goblin lore, the fucking goblin lore, I guess you could say. I mean, that's really the only word for it. But, 
You know, let's let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Come on now. I'm fried and I want to watch some clips. And our friend Josefo here has put together some Tweaker of the Week clips, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to watch some Tweaker of the Week clips here and we're going to determine who is the most uh, entertaining, most powerful, most beloved Tweaker of the Week, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a gander here. Whenever I see a dash cam and like like a big intersection like this, I know it's about to be wild. I know it's about to be fucked. And this is just a, a Snapchat download. Georgia by the video. Damn, this is about to be fucked, isn't it? Is it a car accident? Like, is that what I'm looking for? Okay. Oh? Oh! Oh, he just got... Whoa! Wait, are they pulling up on him? Who saved his ass? What? Whoa. What rate of speed was he traveling at, bro? That guy came in... Dude. <laughs> Bro, why was he going like 45, dude? <laughs> How do you even get that fast on that little ass scooter, dude? Nah, that's all right. That's a that's. Oh, you poor guy. I feel kind of bad for him. I don't. Oh, I don't know if I call him the the winner of the week. I don't know this guy. I mean, he's the loser, dude. Oh, what do we got? Oh, that's the third fucking story, dude. Bro, is he alive? Yeah, I'm free. Did he die? Free I, I don't think he's moving down there, dude. I actually... <laughs> bro, I really don't think he's moving. I haven't seen any movement. Down nah! Oh, he hit his head on the ledge. Look, look, look. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to slow it down. Um, Playback speed... Hold on. Look, look, look. Watch the way he falls right here. Right there. Oh, smack this. Nah. He might actually be dead. Like, I was joking at first, but he genuinely might be dead. Oh, Zepho's kind of crazy for this ladies and gents he he ran tweaker of the week and then he put like three videos of these dudes dying like what am i supposed to pay like oh he died the best way like, what? this is horrible i really hope the third one is like a silly video so i can vote for this one oh okay it's not wait what's happening oh Bro, what the fuck? Thank you. This is that video said he ate to wait much uh L and he ate his whole time. Bro, you gotta blur that on the Dude, nah, bro. I can't even put contacts in my own eye. Like I can't even touch in my eye. That's like, dude. That made me like physically uncomfortable, dude. I don't fucking like that. Why and his homies are just like chilling. His homies are just like standing around. I mean, I guess like what do you do? Yeah, like, oh, I kind of like don't want to see this. Oh, wait, where's his homies? Where's his homies? Wait, what are they saying in the in the Snapchat, bro? I can't even read it. What fucked up? Oh, wait, what's that? Got fucked up and ate his eye. Oh my. Oh my bro, there's just like hella people around him just like chilling. You just like they're all tripping on acid. You just like ate his eyeball. Bro. Dude, that makes me so like I'm like physically cringing right now. What the fuck, dude? Oh my god. No, that's like a I've had some terrible acid trips before, ladies and gents. Like, I've I've had, like, a couple really bad trips, but I have never been like, dude, I gotta rip my eye out and eat it. Like, that is crazy, man. I mean, I wonder if it was his first time or if he was just like, oh, my God. Dude, if you're, like, tweaking, really, honestly, you can't just, like, close your eyes like just sit down and close your eyes like you'll still be tripping and you'll still like see stuff but like it's a lot less overwhelming you know um 
ripping your eye out does not solve the problem. Your brain is still tripping. Like, if you want to stop the trip, you actually have to rip your brain out. So, like, the eye... Dude, I'm still, like, I'm, like, twitching and shit, bro. Like, what the fuck? I'm just, like, imagining, like, bro, how bad would that hurt? Oh, I'm so, oh. What do you think that it was this? Fuck. I think he was, like, tweaking and, like, was, like, having crazy visuals and, like, was scared and, like, maybe was seeing bad shit and was, like, oh, bro, I gotta rip my eye out. Or also, the thing is, like, maybe maybe he hadn't taken a lot of, like, acid or psychs before and maybe he had, like, some, like, he was schizo or, like, some underlying mental health shit. Because that is, that is something that happens pretty often. People, like, don't know they have underlying mental health issues until they take psychedelics. And they, like, go fucking nuts. And then it's like, oh, like, I am schizo or, like, really anxious or whatever, you know? Like, that does happen. Um, so maybe, I, I don't know, man. I mean, that's just fucked, dude. That's, that's awful. <laughs> that's so awful. And he's just like, oh, No, like my eye hurts now. Like I like I feel like like a phantom pain in my eye, bro. Nah. Oh my god. Dude, I feel uh, uh. <laughs> fuck. I can't even like move on. I don't we're supposed to vote on this? Two tweakers getting hit by a car and a dude ripping his eye out? Yeah, are tweakers, yes or no. <coughs> Wait, actually I don't even know. Wait. Wait, so the, the segment... Oh, no, these aren't tweakers. No, so these are just clip of the week? Awful clip... All right. What's... All right. No, no, no. We're going to rank this on a different scale. You know what? We're going to do this on a different scale entirely. We're going to do what is the most... What is the most, like, physically cringe video of the week? Like, which video made me the most uncomfortable? What's the most uncomfortable fucking video of the week? Because all of these videos were bad. Like, we had two people getting hit by cars... Which was really bad. Or, no, no, no. One guy hit by a car. One jumped out of a window and smashed his head on a ledge. All of these made me, like, cringe. It's one of those videos where you watch and you're like, oh, I felt that, you know? The third one of the dude ripping his eye out on the acid trip is terrifying. That, that wins, I guess, if you want to put it <laughs> That's the winner video. <laughs> yeah. That, it was um, one of the most uncomfortable videos I think I've watched in a really long time. That video was kind of horrifying, ladies and gentlemen. I don't... Oh, my God, dude. Oh. You know what I think we should do next? I think we should take an extremely fat dab. Ladies and gents, listen. I'm feeling a real itching to get stoned. I don't know about you. And one of the things I wanted to do for this first episode today is I wanted to ring it in in true goblin fashion. I didn't want to just sit here and yap your ear off for an hour or two. I wanted to sit here and get stoned with you as well. And I brought all the goods today. I brought my favorite rig. I brought my new banger that I just got, which is the, uh, the Toro Terp Slide. And you guys are going to see something crazy. You guys are going to see a very, very nice and very fat dab here. And we're taking this to commemorate the official launch of the Gobcast. You know, I really appreciate all of your guys' patience and, and understanding waiting for this to drop. I'm beyond excited to be here. We're going to add a lot of stuff to the studio, too. Future guests, if you're watching this, listen. I have a rule for guests incoming to the studio, okay? You have to bring something. I It, it can literally be shit. I don't care. You, you have to bring something to put in the studio. So it can be a little, it can be a lighter, right? It doesn't have to be anything crazy. But I'm going to ask that everyone who comes here just please bring a housewarming gift. You know, so for those of you watching this, if potentially maybe you become a guest one day, just keep that in mind. All you maybe, maybe there's some content creators out there that I haven't met yet. Hey, keep that in mind. Just bring any, any sort of housewarming gift to the Goblin Studio. But I brought out all the goods today. I brought out my RJ Glass. This is actually right here, the first heady rig that I ever bought. Um... Petty in the sense that it's custom glass, you know, it's it's made by an artist, it's a one-of-one, one. it's not like a, 
like a production piece or anything. Uh, this is one of, probably not one of, just my favorite piece I own because it's very special to me. And I only bring this out on really special occasions. And I thought today was a special occasion. We also have the matching RJ Marble to use as the cap. And let me just show you guys this banger because it's kind of crazy. So if you see right here on the side, there's the slide and you drop the big giant dab in there, load it up, you know, you get it nice and hot and it just melts down into the slurper and then you take the dab normally. So this banger is kind of insane to say the least. Um, oh my God, this is the one that makes me sick. Holy fuck. It's the one that Tim uses. Is it like already set to a good temp? Do, 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 do. Uh, I don't know how to change it. Temp. Okay, yeah. All right, we're going to do like 540, 530. We do a little hotter around here. Tim's going to be pissed because I'm not going to change it back. Ooh, so I've brought some goods today, folks. I've brought some very fun rosin from my homies at Ein Bay Hash based out of Vegas. I met them while I was at Hash Vegas slash uh, Glass Vegas recently. Um, very cool people behind this. They have some really good stuff, so I wanted to bring it out. Uh, I also have some dump truck uh, right here. We, we brought out the goods today. We brought out the goods today. And, you know, we got to do some Pine Park Hash soon. We got to do some Pine Park Hash. And I would have brought some Only Gas Hash, but I forgot to bring any of the stuff that wasn't already in my bag. So it's just a, it's a tough day today, you know that? But, hey, we made it to the studio, baby. It's Super Bowl Sunday right now, too. I went, when's that starting? Do you know? Five? Oh, fuck it, dude. Hey, fuck it. We're chilling, dude. All right. Let's scoop a big fat dab to celebrate the Gob cast, the Goblin cast, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, is this? Hold on. I'm going to test something. I need to see if it's like too heavy to stand in there. No, it'll do. Okay. We're so locked in on this dab. All right. Wait, no. No. Wait, we're not locked in. Wait. Wait. It fell off. Fuck. Oh, I'm going to bring. No, I'm going to bring a whole load out and leave it here. I'm going to bring the, the shovel banger, or the shovel uh, tool. Ladies and gents, if you're dabbing along with me, ripping along with me, whatever you're doing, drop a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you're chiefing on out here. You know, the monologue episode, this is something that we're going to do every now and then. In today's episode, I wanted it to be more of an introduction to me. I understand that a lot of you watching this video, you, you probably already know me, you know who I am, you know a lot about me if you've been watching my content for a long time, but not everybody does, you know, and it would be a, a bit cocky of me to assume so, so gotta do a little reintroduction, eh? Okay. It says too hot. That's too hot. Oh, baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, I cooked that shit. I was chefing, ladies and gentlemen. I like to make sure it's, it's, I got time after it's heated, you know, in case I forgot something, you know, maybe I want to scoop a little more on there, something like that. But look at this setup, folks. Look at this setup, folks. I also brought out the, uh, the Hefe cube. This is an artist called Hefe. He makes these little cubes that have these little designs in the middle. Very cool stuff. 653. All right, let's see it. Cool. Oh, we're getting close. Oh, we're getting close. Oh, I'm so ready to get high. Oh, I'm so ready to get high, ladies and gentlemen. I'm beyond ready. Oh, I'm so fucking ready to get high. Oh, I'm going to be locked in after this, folks. We're going to be ready to rumble. Okay. Cheers, everybody. What a perfect time. Holy fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> There's a little boy in there. That was a bad 
We're not losing it. It, it. Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fucking podcast. Oh god. Holy shit. Wow. Moving on, folks. Listen. Listen. There's a few other things that I, I kind of want to talk about this episode that I feel are important for an episode all about me. This is an episode with the sole purpose of giving you guys all the info about me so you don't have to ask about it in future episodes because the future episodes aren't going to be all about me, you know? I, I don't think any podcast is like that where someone creates a podcast and it's just all about them. That's just not the way it goes, you know? So a little bit more about myself, you know, my, my current day. Like I said earlier, I'm California sober nowadays. You know, the, the themes of this podcast are going to maintain uh, a drug theme a lot of the time. You know, we're going to be talking about drug abuse. We're going to be talking about experiences with that. I'm going to be sharing my stories. And, uh, you know, that that is a common theme. But I, I think the other main purpose of this is honestly harm reduction. The reason that I share these stories and the reason that I, I want to be doing this and also the, the content I've been doing on my main channel, the reason I do all of this is because I want to share my experiences with people so you don't have to try it yourself. That's always been the motto behind my content. That's been in the little disclaimer at the beginning of all of my videos for years and years now. Uh, it, it's all done so you can understand what this is like without having to try it. Because I understand it's easy to get curious about doing drugs. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of the, the harm reduction that's, that's out there on the internet... They, they kind of bullshit you. They tell you that drugs aren't fun. They tell you that drugs are bad. And that's honestly not true. It, people wouldn't be doing this stuff. People wouldn't be abusing it. People wouldn't be bringing it to parties and doing it socially if it wasn't fun, right? People wouldn't, wouldn't be buying something, spending so much money on addicted to something that was boring, that wasn't a good time, that didn't feel good. Drugs objectively feel good. And that's the bad thing about them. You know, that's the thing that you need to understand is that they feel really good and that's why you shouldn't try them. That's why you should, you know, gain an understanding of them through listening to people's experiences about them, doing your own research. And if you are someone who consumes substances, maybe you can listen to these and learn some things about what you should and shouldn't be doing or, uh, you know, relate to some of the experiences talked about on this podcast. Uh, in particular... My experiences, you know, I, I remember when I was younger and I was doing a lot of shit, I didn't really do any research and I did a lot of stupid stuff and stupid combinations. And I, I looking back at it, I'm shocked that I didn't like OD or die on some shit when I was younger, like quite a few of my friends did uh, doing the stuff I did because I would just not do any research. And I, you know, if there's if there's one thing that I want people to get out of the recurring theme on this podcast, it's like, just listen to it. Don't do it at home, you know. Don't don't listen to some shit on any any channels that talk about this kind of stuff. Any uh, pages online, any articles, any whatever it is, any homies that talk about this kind of shit. Be like, I should do that, you know. That's not the point of any of this. The whole point of this is just spreading knowledge, you know entertainment and education you know they don't have to be separate that's why we're doing this shit so i really appreciate you guys for for being patient and waiting on this and wow i'm absolutely fucking fried right now i'm cooked as shit oh my god you know what we're gonna have a toast everybody before i started this episode today i took a couple swigs you know i was like hey I'm going to go get a bottle of soju, going to have a couple swigs. It's a way to launch the Gobcast. I mean, what better way to do it than, you know, very lightly buzzed and nicely stoned. That's just the way that we do things around here. So a toast to you all and a cheers to you all for, for enjoying the content, supporting the content, being here for the ride. And I think the upcoming episodes are something that you guys aren't going to be ready for. It's going to be entertaining. So thank you guys for pulling up to this one. I appreciate you all. I love you guys for tuning into the Gobcast episode one, and I'll see you 
and episode two. Cheers, everybody. All right, let's do the...